Harold Merlo. Um, he was Honduras, so we was bringing in shrimp and lobster from Ecuador and Honduras. The goal was to build a shrimp farm. The reason why we wanted to build a shrimp farm is because it wasn't subject to weather conditions and politics. See, when you're bringing in stuff from different countries, if, if the country is being worn torn and there's like fighting and conflict, it can affect uh, the distribution of your, of your product. So I'm learning all of this shit, right? Never done fucking importing in my life. So I'm learning, I'm like, all right, cool, cool. I'm learning this stuff. I'm learning that the um, farmed raised shrimp was healthier because now they can control the environment for the shrimps to grow and the lobster to grow. So the, the water was the perfect temperature. Um, they put the, the males with the females. Um, it was always clean. It wasn't no pollution. There wasn't any... Um, like oil spills and shit like that. You know what I mean? Uh, hurricanes and all of this stuff. So it was like, I'm learning all of this shit. Well, come to find out the land that we wanted to build it out in Honduras, it wasn't equipped and we could not raise the funding for it. Therefore, we had to shut it down. Um, but we were bringing in shrimp and we got, let, let me just say this, the mafia is heavy in that shit. Especially in Chicago. Shout out to fucking Italian mafias. Luckily, my brother was tight and real tight. I, don't ask me how or why. Feds, don't quote me on shit. Because I ain't say shit. <laughs> but my brother was... My older brother was tight and good. And he got us, you know, big freezers and stuff like that. And we didn't have to pay anything. But it was a wonderful experience. Um, uh, learning business to business transaction... Uh, rolling out a business plan. The most valuable part of a business plan is guess what? The marketing part of the business plan. All that other stuff was bullshit, to be honest with you. Um, it was the marketing. How do you plan to acquire customers? How do you plan to keep customers? What, what's the lifetime value of these customers? How are you going to do the fulfillment of uh, with these customers? Um, what's the turnaround time? What is... How soon do they need a new shipment? All of that stuff was valuable, right? Um, what else did we learn? Partnership is very, very important, man. You got to do partnership with a person you trust. I trusted uh, Harold. He was a real cool dude. Unfortunately, it didn't pan out the way we needed to. <laughs> shit, shit went bust, right? But we got our name out there. We got the business card. Th that's when I learned um, we spent way too much money incorporating the business, getting flyers, business cards, um, all of this extra foo-foo shit before we actually landed clients. Um, we, we came out of pocket thousands of dollars to get all of it, and that's way before the LLC would go for like $400, $500, right? We were spending thousands of dollars getting all of this stuff done, and we didn't have one client. So by the time we realized that the company didn't have its own legs to stand on, guess what? We were out of fucking money. <laughs> we were out of money, man. So that's why I said, hey, look, launch your business first and see if you like it. You might not like it. I'm in a notary business. I did not incorporate my notary business until two years after because I don't know if I want to be in this business that long, right? I might do a couple of notarizations and be like, eh, that ain't for me, and then I, and I split. My wife is a notary. She became a notary and realized that she didn't like going to people's homes and shit like that, so she quit, right? So uh, I went after the money first. And after I got the money, then everything was consumer funded. That makes sense? It was consumer funded. So how did I get my business incorporated? The customers paid for it. How did I get business cards? The customers paid for it. How did I get my website up? The customers paid for it. Instead of me coming out of my own pocket. That makes sense? That makes sense? Uh, let me read somebody. Yeah, 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 yeah. Dr. Tech, Jumbo Shrimp. I had, I had, uh, 
I forgot. Oh god, they 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 have terms for the shrimps, bro. Like like they're they're the number of count tiger shrimps. Um, yeah, small, medium, large, jumbo, and they went by numbers and shit. Like so, when you talk to these um, distributors, and that's where I learned high levels of distribution. That is what you want in your business, in any business that you have. I want to give you an example. Think about tequila. Just somebody give me the name of their favorite tequila right now. Type in your favorite te tequila. Hi, my name is Renee Denton and I am the owner of California Notary Agency. I am telling you a little bit about my experience with the Cashflow Academy. Mr. Toledo and his agency, the U.S. Notary Agency, has been tremendous to my growth and my ability to scale my loan signing service. With that being said, if it wasn't for him, I would not know all of the things that I have from just his personal coaching, his personal mentoring, and just in general, telling me how to market my business, how to excel, how to leverage, phone scripts, you name it, everything. He had, if it wasn't for himself, his due diligence with me, I would never be where I am now. Let me just give you a sneak peek. 23K a month? from just escrow companies from our agency was able to do in the first six months of our business. That is just tremendous and a salute to Mr. Toledo. If it wasn't for him from just Google my business, from marketing ourselves to just doing mock calls with escrow companies, how to find notaries, he will tell you everything how to scale your business. So thank you so much, Mr. Toledo, for just investing and investing into Miss Renee. And I applaud you and I thank you so much gratitude. Excellent, excellent, excellent.